The Nintendo Wii is arguably one of the most hackable video game consoles ever made and today I'm going to show you guys a few different ways on how to hack your Wii as well as some more fun stuff that you're able to do with a modded Wii that you might not be aware of so stick around even if you know how to hack a Wii but anyway what are we waiting around here for we have some Wiis to hack. Now first of all believe it or not the first step to all of this is actually updating your Wii assuming you haven't already put mods on it and if you have already put mods on it then I hope you find this video enjoyable. Anyway, the reason you want to have your Wii updated to the latest version, which is 4.3 by the way, is because most of the methods used to mod your Wii are meant for this newest version. There are a few old methods that will break your Wii if you try them on the newest version, but uh, don't use those. They're a lot more complicated anyway, so just stick to this. I'm going to quickly go over three different ways you can mod your Wii without any risk of it getting bricked or getting you into any kind of trouble, and one of them doesn't even need an SD card, while another Another one doesn't need Wi-Fi, so if you are restricted on some front and you can't do the popular letter bomb hack that everybody talks about, this video will have you covered. The first method though is the most famous, being the letter bomb method, and before the FBI raid your house, make sure that you google how to letter bomb a Wii if this video doesn't help you. And you know, not how to make a letter bomb or something like that, don't do it, surely that would not be good. Bad naming aside, this method does exactly what it says it does, it's letter bomb your Wii message board, except instead of an explosion, you're bombed with hacks that let you get full control over your Wii and download the homebrew channel. There are countless tutorials on how to do this online, so I'll make this quick. Once you connect to the internet and update your Wii, you want to go to your Wii settings and find your MAC address. Then on your computer, go to the Letterbomb website and put in your Wii's MAC address. It needs to be specifically your Wii's MAC address so it can specifically hack your Wii. Makes sense, right? Once you type that in, make sure you Cut the red wire, don't cut the blue one, it might blow up your computer. This will download a zip file that you need to extract onto an SD card, and once you do that, put the SD card into your Wii and check your Wii message board. You should see a literal letter bomb on the day that you downloaded it, and if you don't see it, check a day or two before or after. And if your Wii still thinks that it's 2006 every time you turn it on, first of all, your battery is dead, you probably need a new one, but you're gonna have to press the plus button a lot to travel 17 years into the future or whenever you download to the letter bomb file in real life. Next, you're gonna have to trust me on this one. Open the letter bomb. Don't ever do this in real life, but in this one instance, it's okay, I promise. You'll see all this code execute and your Wii quickly being hacked. Then you'll see the boot me menu and you'll get the option to install the homebrew channel and boot me. You can get away with just installing the homebrew channel since most people probably aren't going to get into any sketchy mods that really risk breaking your Wii, but if you're really scared of breaking your Wii, then make sure you install boot me to boot too because this will save you from any bricks in the future. You could also back up your NAND if you really want to, but that's a whole other can of worms. Once you do that though, your Wii is modded and you can have fun. This is the most popular method to mod your Wii because all you need is an SD card and an internet connection for your computer. And your Wii to get your MAC address of course. But what if you don't have those? Well, that's what these other methods are for. One of the Wiis I was fixing in my video where I bought 20 broken Wiis had a corrupt system settings menu which stopped me from connecting to to the internet, meaning I could not hack the Wii or fix the issue. This is a common brick, but since I got these used, I'm not sure how it happened. It could have just been them legitimately bricking their Wii somehow, or it could just be good old fashioned NAND rot, which is technical jargon for bad luck. If you find yourself in this situation or any situation where you want to mod your Wii without internet access, this is what you need to do. Get yourself a copy of Lego Indiana Jones, Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, or Lego Batman. There are similar hacks with Twilight Princess and Super Smash Bros. Brawl and they don't need internet access either, but they're a little more complicated, plus they're more expensive games. I will personally be using Lego Indiana Jones because I already have that game. Whichever game you are using though, download the mod and copy the private folder onto your SD card. But if you already have a private folder on your SD card, you should probably back that up so you don't lose any of your save data. That's all you have to do as far as SD card prep though. Put the SD card and the game into your Wii and open the game one time. As soon as you get to the title screen, exit out of the game, and I know this is a weird step but if you haven't played a game at least once, the Wii will not let you copy save data over from your SD card, probably to stop modders or something like that, I don't know. If you haven't guessed by now, the way this hack works is by moving a hacked save file on one of these games over to your Wii system menu and then booting the game. Once you open up Indiana Jones, go over to the character creator area of the game. It might be a little laggy and stop you from entering at first, but don't worry, this is normal. Once you get in there, just select the skeleton with the bazooka and you're in. Just like with the letter bomb. I 
assume you do the same thing with Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga and Lego Batman, but I haven't tried either of those, so I don't really know for sure. I just think it's cool this exploit works through the custom characters in a Lego game, but anyway, this loads Boot Me the exact same way as last time, so install the Homebrew channel and Boot Me or whatever you want to do and you're good to go. But, what if you don't have an SD card? Both of these methods require that, so obviously they won't work, but there is one method to hack your Wii without an SD card, but it does require the internet, so if you have no Wi-Fi and no SD card, then you're out of luck in this video. There are ways around this though, but they're more advanced, so just check out weebrew.org and do some research. I will also say you will need an SD card to do anything useful with the Homebrew channel because it uses an SD card to load apps, but if you're just impatient and need to get it installed without one, this is the method for you. First, connect to the Wi-Fi and update your Wii and all that just to make sure you're on the latest version. Then you need to go to your Wi-Fi settings and head over to the DNS section. You need to tell the Wii that you're using a custom DNS instead of automatic. Then you need to set the primary DNS to 18.188.135.9, which is on your screen right now. I always also set up the secondary DNS to do the same thing just in case, but you might not need to, I don't know. Go ahead and test it out, you're not going to break your Wii, it's fine. Once you confirm this, run the connection test, but do not update your Wii this time. Click no. Next, you need to back out to the internet page and click on user agreements. Tell your Wii that you want to connect to Wii Connect 24 and use the Wii Shop channel by clicking yes, then click next. If you did this right, you should see a pony on your screen. Do not click yes or no though or else your Wii will freeze and you'll need to start this whole thing over. It's not the end of the world if you do happen to click yes or no. You won't break your Wii or anything, but you will waste your time and that's even worse. What you really need to do here is just wait for a minute or two and eventually a screen will pop up that looks similar to the ones we've seen before. This one shouldn't be here long and if it stays on this screen for more than a few minutes, turn your Wii off and try again. I'm only saying this because I was stuck on this screen for over 20 minutes and I thought it just took a long time to load, but nope. I restarted my Wii, did everything over, and it worked in less than one minute. And hey, would you look at that? We're at the old familiar Boot Me menu and you should know what to do from here. Except you cannot install Boot Me to Boot 2 since you have no SD card, which basically just means you need to be careful with your mods, but uh, you have no SD card, so you should be fine. Out of all these methods, I personally prefer the Indiana Pwns hack because, well, first of all, it uses the word pwn and I like that word, but also because when you're modding more than one Wii, it's a lot faster to get that hacked save file and copy it to the Wiis you need to mod than it is to connect every Wii to Wi-Fi, get your MAC address, and do the letter bomb over and over again. If you're only modding one Wii, it's probably just as fast, but I have about 20 of these things that I need to mod. I'm not doing anything illegal on them though, so don't worry. I'm mainly doing it to copy NANs and give you guys some legitimately purchased Wii wear if you want to buy one of those Wiis on my whatnot stream. I'm also not charging extra or anything, I'm just doing this as a bonus and a thank you for supporting the channel and sticking around for Wii Wednesday, which is why most of those games that I'm giving you guys are Mega Man games. I've heard you subscribers may enjoy Mega Man, is that true? If you like Mega Man, leave a comment down below. Now that we know the best and easiest ways to hack your Wii, what can we do with a modded Wii? I mean, what was the point of all that? Well, like I said just a minute ago, it's very useful for backing up and restoring your Wii's NAND, which is basically the memory of the Wii. If you ever brick your Wii, restoring a NAND will fix it. If you have a corrupted system file like that one Wii I had, then restoring another NAND onto it will fix that too. It's a complicated process, but I already kind of got into that in my video on the limited edition Silver Wii, so you should watch that if you really want to know more. Other than all that boring stuff though, you could of course install WiiWare onto your Wii, which is great especially when it comes to the limited edition Club Nintendo channels. Do you regret missing out on Doc Lewis Punch-Out? Just install the WAD! I mean, uh, do you regret accidentally deleting it? Because I think installing it without ever legitimately purchasing it may be in piracy territory, which I cannot encourage on YouTube, but if you have ever downloaded this channel, you should be okay. Though if you haven't, I'm not gonna tell anybody, and I'm also not giving you any links. You're on your own. The main reason people want the homebrew channel, though, is of course USB Loader GX, which loads Wii and GameCube ISOs off of an external hard drive, and yes, it can even load wads like Doc Lewis Punch-Out. Now, you might be thinking, hey, that's illegal, but no, it's actually not. If you watched my video on fixing 20 broken Wiis, and you know that the Wii disk drive is the most common thing to fail in a Wii, which stops you from playing anything on your Wii that isn't already downloaded, and that's no fun. I want to play Big Brain Academy. You think I'm just going to sit here with a broken Wii disk drive and not play it? What do I look like, a square? Well, USB Loader lets you play Wii 
games without needing a disk drive or even the disks, but no piracy guys, don't do it. It is however totally legal to get the ISOs of games that you have legally purchased, so if your disk drive is broken and you want to play your Wii without buying a new one, this is by far the best way to do it. Plus, you could pirate other games, but I would never encourage that. Don't do it guys. If your Wii disk drive does work, you could also put a disk in and directly install a game onto your external USB device from the disk itself, which is super cool. And just game preservation of course, nothing wrong with that. I mean, if you rented a game from a game store, did this, and then returned the game in the same day to get all your money back, that might be a little bit illegal, but who would ever do such a thing? <laughs> That'd be crazy. You can also download covers and stuff to make this thing look pretty, but there's more to the homebrew channel than just USB loader. First of all, with Reconnect 24, you can play your Wii games online again, which is great, but more importantly, you can also install mods. And installing mods on the games is both fun and legal. Actually, my oldest video that I still have publicly available is a tutorial on how to add extra characters to Super Smash Bros. Brawl without replacing any, which is a project I spent more hours working on than I'm willing to admit. Modding games aside, you can also of course get other emulators like for the NES, the Super Nintendo, the Nintendo 64, the PlayStation 1, the Atari 2600, etc. And those are all certainly fun to play with, especially if you only use ROMs that you legally own, but all this stuff used to be fairly complicated back in the day when I was modding the Wii. I mean, you had to do all this stuff to your SD card, install iOSs, but not the wrong iOSs or you'll brick your Wii, and that was a whole can of worms. But now there's this little thing called the Homebrew Browser. This is really the only thing you ever need to install onto your SD card for the Homebrew channel, especially if you're new and unfamiliar to all this. This is basically just an app store for the Homebrew channel, and while it doesn't have every single Homebrew app ever created, it certainly has all the ones you'll need, including USB loader and all the emulators. There's even custom games on here like RuneScape, Chess, Windows Pinball, which I couldn't get to work, and even an app that makes the Wii logo bounce around your screen. I mean, that's pretty cool. Believe it or not, the Wii disk drive physically is also able to read DVDs and movies, but because Nintendo didn't want to pay the money for that feature, it won't let you. Unless you mod it, of course, meaning there are a few mods on here that also let you watch movies on your Wii, which I'm sure is useful now that Netflix on the Wii doesn't seem to work anymore. Adding the homebrew channel to your Wii also allows you to play region locked games, which means you can play PAL games, Japanese games, or whatever games that your Wii can't normally play. So you remember that video a few days ago where I unboxed some whatnot stuff and got some Japanese Wii games? Well, jokes on you guys, I can actually play them on my American Wiis because I modded them. And that's not even illegal, that's just a perk to modding your Wii. Plus, uh, you may not be aware of this, but usually Japanese games are cheaper than the American ones, so if you want to be completely, you know, law-abiding like most citizens tend to be, then you can mod your Wii, unregion lock it, and then just pay less for Japanese games. It's a win-win for everybody. Not to mention, some games never even made it over to America. There are some exclusive games in Japan mostly, but also in PAL, I'm sure, I, though I haven't Googled that. I guess I could be wrong. There are so many different apps you can get for your homebrew channel, and next Wii Wednesday, I'll probably make a video on the top 10 best homebrew apps for your Wii, just so you guys at home can save time scrolling and just enjoy some more Tutor P Wii Wednesday videos. I mean, what's better than that? Nothing. Nothing is better than that. Don't answer that. So, in summary, what's the point of all this? Well, first of all, it's cool, and you can tell your friends about it, which is all I need, personally. But also, you can play Wii and GameCube ISOs to your heart's content without ever having to switch the disc out, which is extremely useful if you have a broken disc drive like the majority of Wii owner. You can unregion lock your Wii, of course, which is extremely useful. You can play emulators on this thing, which means you can play every single Mega Man game except for Mega Man 11, which I assume is something my subscribers would be interested in. I did mention there's a Game Boy Advance emulator too, right? Oh, I didn't? Well, I'm sure if you're a Mega Man Battle Network or a Pokemon fan, you could also have fun with those, and the DS emulator as well. That one's also good. The ability to play online again with Reconnect 24 is also great. I'll do another one of these Wii Wednesday videos getting more into that, but it lets you join Mario Kart tournaments or play Smash Bros. Brawl online, just like the good old days. Plus, that Brawl hack I made a tutorial for back in the day is reason enough to mod your Wii in my opinion. Opinion. I mean, you want Waluigi and Smash, right? Because this is how you get Waluigi and Smash, and also Darth Vader and Shadow the Hedgehog and Mega Man X and Zero, but I'm sure you get the idea. While obviously this opens up a lot of opportunities for pirating, you can also enjoy a lot of perks of a modded Wii without pirating or breaking any rules, which is why at this point there's really no reason not to mod your Wii if you have the tools necessary. The tools necessary being a Wii and a computer. And also, just to shout out my whatnot stream one more time, all of those Wiis will have the 
homebrew channel installed just to save you guys the time and trouble, but I will not be including any SD cards or anything illegal on them. That's all up to you guys and I don't want to hear about it. Those were the best and easiest ways to hack or mod your Nintendo Wii and some fun stuff you can do with a modded Wii. Hopefully this helped out some of you Wii owners out there, but if not, as always, I hope you at least enjoyed the video. And before you ask, Everything I did in this video and showed off is completely legal and you can do it yourself without getting into any trouble. I would never do anything illegal, guys. Believe me. At least not on camera.